Hello and welcome to Command Line Git. This course is designed for data scientists and non-developers who want to learn how to use Git through the command line. So what is Git? Git is a technology used for backing up and maintaining versions of your work files. Usually this is computer code. So why does Git matter? Well, Git enables you to collaborate with other teams such as engineering teams and easily share and track your work especially with services like GitLab, GitHub, and Bitbucket. To get started, you will need to install Git and set up a free account with any of the providers listed in this slide. In this course, we will be using GitHub. Installing Git on Apple computers is easy. It may auto-install when you attempt to clone your first repository, such as typing that git clone command in your terminal. Otherwise, it can be installed via Homebrew with the noted link below. Installing on Linux is just as easy. Depending on your flavor of Linux, you can install Git using apt or yum. For Windows, there is an alternative to use the installer found in gitforwindows.org. So, if you don't have Git installed, take a moment to choose the installation that's appropriate for your computer. Do that and we'll get started. Okay, so what we're going to do here is actually create a GitHub account. I'll start by opening up my browser and going to github.com you'll see that the initial page has an area to set up your account where you'll enter your username and email and password. I will keep my username consistent with my email handle just for simplicity, but you can uh, use any account you want, of course. So now I'll enter my email. And my password so think one real quick okay sign up and in this screen I'm gonna be asked to solve a quick puzzle So I'll just turn this around real quick and then join uh, the free plan. Once I join the free plan, um, basically asked uh, to kind of identify myself. So I'm just going to check some default things, you know, put other, uh, put that I have very little experience programming and uh, just other again. And then after that, um, I'll be asked to verify my email address. So they'll send me a verification email, uh, which here in this screen you see that I received. So like now I'm just gonna verify my email address. Um, and after doing so, I'm taken to this particular page and that's it. So next what we wanna do is actually create a repository. So we'll click on this link here, create a repository. Uh, next we wanna give our repository a name and the name we'll give it is demo. Then we can add a description to it. Uh, this is completely optional, but I'll just place, this is my demo repository. Uh, that should be good enough, really. Next, we need to decide if we're gonna make this a public repository where anyone can view it, or a private one where we restrict access. So we'll leave it as public. And these next options we can skip for now as we will come back to them later and create our repository. So here we're taking to our repository page. We just created it. You can see we have basically a folder called demo and some commands that we will get into later in the course. So I want to quickly recap what we have done so far up to this point. The first thing that we did was create an account with a cloud provider called GitHub. After creating the account, 
we created a repository and gave it a name demo. So we have a cloud-based GitHub repository. So now that you have created your Git repository, you're going to find that you have some settings or some commands that you um, recommended to execute for your repository. But we won't do that just yet. In fact, we're going to want to go into our account settings and get to the place where we can set up uh, what's called an SSH key. So in your upper right hand menu, go to settings. Then we will find the menu that says SSH and GPG keys. Here is where we'll be entering an SSH key that we will be generating locally on our laptop so that we can securely communicate with GitHub and store our files. So once I click on that key, we'll have a title and really in that key box is where we will enter or paste our key value that we generate. So the next thing that I want to do is uh, look to generate some SSH keys to place into this box. Uh, what I'm going to do is open up my terminal and before anything I want to check to see that I don't have an id.rsa or idrsa.pub file in my SSH folder so we'll check to see if that exists and list the contents and so I see that I don't have that particular file although I do have some other keys so I'll proceed with uh, generating some keys now yours is probably going to be blank uh, if it's not uh, then skip this step but basically I'm going to issue the command SSH, SSH keygen uh, then the minus T parameter uh, selecting the RSA encryption uh, and then follow it with your email so type it as is on the screen with your email uh, and that will prompt you to create uh, a new file by default then this is your private key so it'll save there in that SSH directory uh, so we'll just go ahead and hit enter since it doesn't exist. I don't necessarily want to set a passphrase, so I'll hit enter there and then again here. Uh, and so now my SSH keys have generated. So if I view my directory listing, now I see that I have both an ID RSA pub file, which is my public key, and then ID underscore RSA file, which is my private key. So we'll be using those uh, in a little bit. After we've generated the SSH key, uh, we want to copy it into our GitHub account. One way to display our SSH key contents is uh, via the cat command, which will render it on our screen. So the key I'm going to focus on or the file I'm going to focus on is ID RSA pub. This is the one that I'm going to paste into GitHub uh, right in this uh, key box. So. I'll just hit enter and I can essentially just highlight my public key on my screen and then copy that and paste it in that key box and uh, I'll give mine a title as well uh, you can you know give it any title that you want I'll give mine this title add the key uh, you might be prompted for a password so just enter that and now you'll see that you have your SSH keys and so uh, you can have multiple SSH keys if you're connecting from uh, various places or various computers um, or laptops so let's take a moment to recap what we just finished doing a little while ago uh, so to begin with we generated two keys basically an ID RSA private key and ID underscore RSA public key the public key is what we will share with GitHub, and that's what we ended up pasting in the key section, so that now our computer can our computer can communicate with GitHub in a secure and authenticated, identified fashion. So the next thing that we want to do is actually make a copy or clone our repository to our computer. Uh, we'll go to our uh, demo. Uh, repository 
uh, once uh, we click on that link, we'll see that we are in our uh, demo repository that we created earlier. So open up a terminal, uh, choose a location where you want to create your folder. In my case, I'm going to uh, create it in, this, in my git folder, in my home directory. And I'll list out that I don't have any folders here, just like an examples folder, that's the only directory. So uh, my next thing uh, to do is actually clone the repository and pull down uh, this repo folder. So I'll copy the SSH command uh, onto my clipboard and then I'll type git clone and paste that command. And before I hit enter, um, you know, again, I just want to show really quickly that we are copying this repository. There are no files, just some, you know, kind of basic instructions. Um, so then I'll hit enter and I'll be given a, a message like, you know, basically, do I trust this connection? Um, and there we go. Now I will have uh, an empty repository because there is nothing in, in that particular repository right now. So the next thing that I want to do is create a readme.md file, md standing for markdown. Readme files provide information in a visual way about your repository and we'll look at that later. So the first thing that I want to do is list out my contents and change into my newly cloned demo folder. So now that I'm in there, I'll see that I don't have any files with the exception of this .git settings file, which I could ignore in my new cloned directory. So now I'm going to create the readme file via nano. So type nano readme.md for the markdown file. And within my command line editor, uh, I will uh, place or type two hashtags and essentially say, this is my sandbox repo. So the two hashtags are markdown language and uh, that's all I need for now really. So I'll save this file by typing control X then yes or Y and then enter and that'll create my new file. So if I list my contents one more time, I see that I have my readme file. Now you can create uh, this file with any other text editor of choice such as Adam Note Plus Plus or anything that you might have installed on your laptop. So now that we've created a file, it's time for us to save our contents up onto the Git server uh, up in the cloud. So to get started with that, uh, the first command that we want to issue is git add. And since it's only the readme file, we can enclose the readme file in single quotes and uh, push uh, and add this or stage this uh, specific file to get saved. But a much easier way if you have multiple files is just add the period and hit enter and that will capture everything. Next we'll type our message git commit uh, dash m for message and give a brief explanation in terms of what we are saving uh, to github. So I'll just say this is my first commit and hit enter. Uh, next I get you know kind of a brief message and it can be a little cryptic at times but what it's basically saying is that we changed one file or basically added a file, which is this readme file. And then a couple of more pieces of information here down at the bottom about the readme file. Um, now I want to actually push or save these changes to the GitHub server. So I will type git push minus u for user origin head. And this basically says everything that's in queue, I want it pushed or saved to the server. So this is command is necessary to push it up to GitHub itself. Um, so after this, we'll hit enter. And that will um, take care of pushing our objects or our file changes up into GitHub. And it'll basically tell us that we have a new branch called master. And this is going to be the main branch going forward uh, for our projects. And uh, so make a note of that as we're going to uh, refer to that and differentiate this branch from others in the future. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is actually take a look at our changes and how they resulted in GitHub server. So to recap, we uh, executed the command git add in order to add the readme file, then git commit followed by git push in order to actually save the changes to the GitHub server. Then we got this message below. So if we go on over to our GitHub server, we see that we're on our demo repository. So we're going to refresh this 
and uh, after refreshing we see that the contents change and the contents are basically uh, have changed with the uh, readme file uh, down below so this is what we com committed or added committed and pushed so uh, this message is displaying as intended and if I look uh, at the contents of this readme file um, it it's exact and it parallels what I entered in my nano editor the hashtag hashtag this is my sandbox repo so the changes that we made have been effectively uploaded uh, to our Git repository. So in this next step, I want to add another file to my GitHub repository. I'll return to my terminal, quickly list out the contents, and I'm going to notice that the readme file is here just as it is in my repository, so everything is consistent. Next, I'll type the command touch space index.html in order to create a file named index.html which is actually completely blank contains uh, no content so this file is empty in essence so before I commit I want to check which branch I'm in so by default I should be in my master branch so I'll type git branch and it's true I am in my master branch the only branch I have then I'll type git status just to see if there's anything I need to do uh, that Git wants me to do, or wants to uh, inform me of, rather. So just type git status. And I see here that it's saying I have a new file, index.html, in this red coloring. So there's something that needs to be done with this. So I will go ahead and type git add and index.html in single quotes. Hit enter. And I'll type git status one more time to see if anything has changed. So as you can see, I'm basically staging a new file to be added to my repository. And you can see the like difference in colors as well. So now I'll commit it and append a message to it via git commit. So git commit dash m and then add a message with regards to the new file that I'm adding. So adding my first page in single quotes, hit enter. And I've gone through the process of adding it. So if I uh, click its uh, type git status once again there's nothing uh, more to be done now it's time to push the changes to github or to the server so I'll say type git push hyphen u origin head and this loads it to the server and it's all ready to go I get a quick confirmation message here about adding uh, my files so when I go back and refresh my repository page I see that index.html is here, and if I actually click on the contents of index.html, I'll see that it's completely blank, just as the one I created locally. So, that's it. For this exercise, let's edit our index.html page and add some text to it. As you recall, it's blank in our demo folder, so we'll be opening it up in any text editor. I'll use code for this example. And what I'll be adding is just some hypertext markup language, which is HTML, uh, which is the, the base uh, language to render or create HTML pages. So I'm defining some tags here, and I'll be uh, giving this a title. This is my first page. And I'll just enter some simple text in the body of this page. And I'll call this, or I'll say, rather, welcome to my first commit page. Then I'll save that. And so the next thing that you want to do after you entered any text that you want is you want to uh, commit it just like we did in the previous steps. So let's preview the contents of our directory. Again, everything is the same. Index HTML is still there. Uh, and I'll leave you with a git status. Um, and after that, you can take it from here um, and commit your changes. Okay, so hopefully you found that pretty straightforward. Now from the last video, I left you with git status so that we can see that we modified our HTML file, and we certainly did. Uh, so the next step is to hit git add or type git add. This time I'm placing a period. That means just all files. So uh, git commit dash m, and I'll just place a message. 
changes to my main page should be good enough now I've committed it and if I type git status again it's clear so time to push it uh, to the repository and once we do that it gets loaded and written up and if we go to our repository we click on index HTML we'll see that the changes we just made appear in our github repository so the next thing that I want to cover is creating new branches in git as you can see here I have my master branch where I'm working on the the main uh, default branch called master so I'm going to go into my demo folder and as I can see nothing has really changed from the last changes that I made so everything is intact now I'm going to uh, make some changes to my index file so I want to start by creating four hyperlinks to three pages that I will create in a little bit so I'll enclose my text in some paragraph tags here so that you know, it can have some clean li line breaks my first page that I'm going to link to I'm going to call it pink page um, and I'll also create uh, two other pages as I said uh, a green page and a peach page so uh, what I'll do next is within the text I'm going to create some hyperlink uh, tags so that the text is linked to the new page so uh, these anchor tags will basically point to a pink.html page and I'll move this text into those between those anchor tags so that that text serves as a link now I'll just copy and paste this line and uh, paste it two more times for my other pages, the uh, peach and the green page. And I will also update the text. Um, I'll also create one more link and that'll be for the home page or this index page that I'm working on here. So I'll update the link reference to index.html. Now, um, if I take a look at my actual files, I haven't created any new files. I still have my index.html file. I just modified that one in preparation for three new files. For the new files, I'm going to copy my index file. It'll be my template. And I'll paste uh, three files into my demo folder, which will be my green, pink, and peach. So hit command control V and I'll start renaming these to pink, green and peach respectively. So now I have three pages. I index uh, and three new pages, pink, peach and green. So I want to actually make some distinction between my pink, peach, and green page so that if I preview them, they look a little different. So I'll just add the text pink in here and change the uh, background color to a pinkish color. Now, uh, this is a hex color that'll render a pinkish background color if I were to open the page. And I will do the same for my peach page by entering peach text for the word peach and changing the background color to a peach-like color. And I'll save that and do the same for my green page. So again, set the background color to green or to a greenish color and add the word green as well okay so now I updated my three pages and I have my index and if I preview the files that I have listed I have three new uh, files green peach and pink so now I'm ready to um, actually create a new branch and 
I'll, I'll do that by checking the branch that I'm on right now, which is master. And the new branch, um, as you can see, we have master here. But uh, the new branch is basically uh, going to store these new changes that I made because I'm not ready to finalize them yet. So I'll create a new branch by typing git checkout b, <clears throat> git checkout hyphen b color changes, the name of my branch. And now it tells me that I switched over to my new branch uh, color changes. So if I type git branch, it's denoting here with this asterisk that I am in the color changes branch. So I type git status. And I see that it tells me I've modified my index file and that I created three new, uh, three new pages, excuse me. Uh, which is my green, peach, and pink. And so they're not tracked yet, and I will need to add them to this branch. So <clears throat> I'll need to add these pages uh, using the same steps uh, that we've seen before. So now, again, confirming that I'm in the color changes branch, I will basically uh, begin adding these uh, three files by typing git add period to for uh, the period for adding all files and uh, my message or get commit uh, with my message I'll put uh, testing out color pages because as I said I'm not ready to finalize those so that added these three files to my the branch that I'm on which is color changes and uh, what I what I want to do now is I want to save this branch of this work to github so I will type git push uh, origin head with a minus u parameter and what I get next is a link for a pull request now we're not necessarily going to go into a pull request right now but that's basically when we want to when we agree that these we want to commit these changes and make them and merge them into our master branch but we'll talk about that later so now if I refresh my page I'll see that uh, my master has the same files, but if I switch over to my color changes, now I start seeing my green, peach, and pink file. So this is where my new my, my changes are, you know, uh, I guess on hold or waiting for them to be committed. So here are the new changes and my message. So as you can see here, I have my three uh, files locally and if i were to say git checkout master or you know go back to the master branch i would see that my files disappear and i only have the index page um, but when i go back to git checkout color changes i see that the files that are like work in progress are show back up so now i want to take a moment to recap what we've done so far so when we started out on GitHub, we created a, a repository called Demo. Demo created a master branch automatically. That is the main branch where the most up-to-date production-ready code uh, should exist. So the first thing that we did was create a readme file and push it to our master branch. So that exists, that exists in our master branch or existed in our master branch. Then we created a local file called index.html. Again, because we cloned the repository and it came with the master branch locally, locally in our laptop or computer, we're working in the master branch. Next, we decided to take the index.html file that we created and then we pushed it up to GitHub. So working in the master branch, that particular file also was saved and stored in the master branch once we added the changes locally to our local master branch and committed it to the local master branch. Next, we decided to make some speculative changes, not permanent changes, but we wanted to uh, understand or, or sample what a ping, green, and peach HTML file would look like. But since we're not ready to totally sign off on those three new files, 
and the changes that we made into index HTML, we decided to create another branch called color changes. Now color changes exist here locally for us, but does not exist in GitHub just yet. But it would, it did, con or it does contain rather, the changes we did to index.html and the three new files, pink, green, and peach.html. Next, we uh, decided to commit, uh, after committing, excuse me, adding and committing these files to our color changes branch, uh, we then pushed that information up to GitHub. So now GitHub parallels what our laptop has, which is a master branch with the original copy of index.html and readme and the color changes branch, which not only includes the three files, but also includes the modified index.html and readme file. So uh, we actually saw that in one of the last videos. So up to that point, we're working with a original copy of our index.html and readme file and a, another copy that has three additional kind of speculative files or work in process progress files, uh, pink, green, and peach HTML. And that's what we've done up to this point. I want to take another uh, couple of minutes to preview the changes that we've made to both the color changes branch and compare it to the master branch. So uh, as you can see here, I am in my color changes branch. And in fact, uh, the Visual Studio Code editor lets me know that I'm in my color changes branch. So this is kind of a neat feature that this editor has. But uh, what I want to look at uh, more importantly are, or want to preview more importantly are the files. So being in the uh, color changes branch, and I can confirm that through my terminal. So if I say git branch, it'll confirm that I'm, I am in color changes. And again, color changes is the one that consists of these three additional files. Um, I can see, or I can preview uh, the files here. And so if I click on home page, this takes me directly to the index page. The pink page will take me to the other page with the pink background, the peach page to, to the peach page and the green page to the green page. So you can see that this particular project, um, or uh, I guess this version of the project files under the color change branch have these three links. So um, if I were to go back to my master branch, right? And actually let's go to Visual Studio Code and, and I see that these three are visible like we saw in one of our previous videos. But if I switch that over, if I switch over to master, excuse me, um, git checkout master, and that is how you switch between branches, you type git checkout and then the name of the branch, um, then Oh, excuse me. Uh, well, one thing I should note is that I had uh, some um, typos in my previous files. I actually, this actually said um, HMTL. It should have said HTML. So if you copied this uh, word for word, just, you know, please uh, change that or update that um, yourself. So let me take a moment to um, actually make these changes. And so I'll just say git add, git commit, message is proper file names. And I will push this to my repository, git push origin head. And so now I have updated my um, color changes branch. So as I was saying, uh, if you take a look at uh, the branch that you're on, we are on color changes. Now, if I want to go over to uh, master, right? So I'm gonna say git checkout master in order to go to my master branch. These three files are kind of gonna disappear and we are actually gonna have the original version of the index file, right? So the index file, our original version doesn't have any links to it. So if I go back to uh, my index page that I'm previewing through my browser and I just hit refresh, boom, those things are gone. 
So you can see that uh, through the changing of branches, we're able to toggle back and forth between two different versions of our code. And that is important because uh, it's kind of like saying, well, I'm testing some stuff out. I'm not really sure that I will want to commit to my changes. So I'm just going to store them separately. And that's like the power of Git that it allows you to work on multiple versions. That's why it's called version control. And you know, being able to work on it independently, with, independently without making changes to the master branch, which is like the main code base. So now when I uh, actually checked out, uh, when I switched over, excuse me, to color changes, get check out color changes, uh, I'll have like these three files show up again. And if I go back to my browser and refresh, there I go again. So uh, that is uh, the visual, I guess, demo that I wanted to make sure that you guys get to see so you can truly understand what's going on with Git and the you know power or usefulness of uh, Git itself. In this video, I'm going to rewind the clock a little bit and take us back to the point where we first pushed our changes in our color change branch. So uh, if you recall, um, we basically initiated oh, a couple lessons ago a git push origin head to save the changes we made to the green peach and, uh, peach and pink page. Uh, then uh, it we got prompted with this create pull request message. This pull request message, you will get it the first time that you push a branch uh, to uh, GitHub. And it's going to basically provide you with a link to click to and this is uh, for a pull request. So what this pull request does is basically take your code if you're ready, it'll take the code that you just modified and it'll uh, be the first step in combining it with your main branch or your master branch. So I'm going to uh, hit control and then click on this and it's going to open up a new page and it's automatically going to fill in the information to create a pull request. And you can see here my last message on the commit was adding color pages. So basically all you really have to do is just uh, leave a comment as to why you're requesting this pull request, why you're requesting for your peers uh, to review your code and then combine it with the main code base uh, in the master branch. Uh, typically, if you are working with peers, you're, you would fill in uh, their name or someone's name here in the reviewer section, but since we're not doing that, uh, we, we can completely skip that part. And so here I'll leave a comment and say, adding new wonderful color pages. Okay. And then I'll click on pull request or create pull request, excuse me, uh, that button. And next, uh, what I'm being asked is, do you want to merge the pull request? Now, uh, you know, typically once a reviewer uh, takes a look at this, they'll approve it. Uh, and then you, either you or the reviewer can merge it. But in this case, since it's just us, we will go ahead and click on merge pull request. So basically we're saying uh, take this code in color changes, uh, these three new additional files and uh, place them or combine them in the master branch that only has the index file. Um, so now I'm going to say merge pull request or click on merge pull request to confirm the merge. And after that, once that is done, I get this little icon up here that says merged. So basically it's saying the changes in your color change branch got added to, to master. And let's take a look at that. So we, we go, we again, we're at master. Let's just refresh. Uh, oops. Well, there we go. Now that already uh, showed us that the code or the pages got combined into master. So like now the, the pages or the changes that we had in color changes are now part of the master branch. So any changes that we made there are now actually reflected in the master. Uh, the last thing that I want to touch on is uh, this message down here that says your pull request was successfully merged and closed. What do you want to do with your branch? I recommend you delete it uh, simply because uh, as you commit more and more code uh, changes in the future, the number of branches is con is going to just continuously grow here. So if you really do not need that code uh, at your immediate disposal, um, I recommend just deleting the branch and that takes care of uh, it from popping up in that menu. Of course, if you always want to restore your branch, you certainly can do that by going 
uh, to your previous pull request and then restoring the branch. But uh, once we do that, uh, I'll refresh, uh, then that branch no longer appears here and it's just kind of a cleaner working space. Okay, the final thing that I want to touch on before we um, you know, head off and do a couple of exercises or practice uh, exercises is the uh, pulling of the changes that you've just committed to GitHub. So locally, if I look at my local branch, or excuse me, where I'm at locally, I can say git branch or type git branch, excuse me, I'm on my color changes branch and I can list out my files and I'll see that I'll have green, index, pink, and all the other changes that I made. But if I check out back to master, right, and I list the pages, I only have these two pages. So that is uh, evident when I go back to Visual Studio. And uh, again, I'm in my master branch and only see that I have the index.html page. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to want to actually pull uh, the uh, the changes from GitHub, right? The new changes that you just combined and merged because that doesn't happen locally. It only happened on the cloud on the GitHub server. Uh, so what you'll what you will be doing is you'll say git. Uh, you will first you will make sure that you're on the master branch. You can type git branch to ensure you're on master. If you're not a master, just simply type git checkout master, and that'll take you to the master branch. And at that point, you will say git pull. And once you hit, uh, hit enter on git pull, it basically gives you a summary of the files that it um, you know pulled down, which is green, peach, and pink uh, .html pages. And so like now, if I return to my Visual Studio code, I see that I am on master and I have the green, peach, and pink page. So uh, that's very important. So you're not working on old code. You wanna make sure that you always pull down the latest uh, version of master uh, just in case you or anyone else made any changes and you want to work off of the latest you know approved set of code um, so you can actually run git pull anytime uh, just to kind of get the changes and if you're up to date you're up to date and if there's new changes then of course you'll get a notification uh, that's definitely good practice okay now it's time to focus on practicing the skills that we have learned. So in fact, we've actually covered a lot and what we have covered, it will pretty much encompass about 70% or more of your interaction with Git. So for our first exercise, uh, let's make changes uh, to our local code, right? And then we will create a branch so that we can store those changes in our code. So what we'll, what we'll do uh, to start with is create another page with a new background color. It's your color of choice. Um, pick your favorite color, any color you like. Now save the page in the demo folder, right? Give it the name like color or let's say uh, yellow.html for example. Then uh, create a link to your new page across all the other pages. Uh, that's something that you saw earlier in the lectures. Uh, in earlier lectures where uh, adding a hyperlink is you know pretty straightforward so refer back to that if you uh, if you don't recall and then lastly uh, you're gonna create a new branch where you will be adding and committing your changes to so uh, you don't have to necessarily add your changes to the branch or commit them or anything uh, but simply just create the new branch okay so uh, as I mentioned, what we will be doing is creating another page with, um, let's say, our favorite color, and we'll be linking to it and then committing, or excuse me, adding our changes to a new branch. So uh, to get started, I can simply um, look for a color, um, hex color chart, and here I'm going to computer hope uh, slash HTML color, and I like this because it actually has the color names right next to it. Um, and then here is the hex uh, color uh, numbers or codes that um, that we saw earlier in the program. So I'm going to select this uh, blue gray color, and basically I'll just uh, create a new file, and I can just simply kind of copy and paste my code uh, from another page. Really, since all I really need is the um, is the the number or excuse me the hex color that I'm going to uh, update so I'll take care of that and I'll 
replace this background color, a BG color, with just that. And, and it's like now, I'm going to say, Welcome to my first peach page. We'll update that. My first blue gray page. And I will call this, I'll save this file, say blue gray.html. <clears throat> now, the other thing that I want to do is actually link this across all my other pages. So um, I will simply copy this line of code, which is a hyperlink, paste it, and the new file name is blue gray. So I'll replace blue gray with that. And so, like now, it'll link to the blue gray and update the text as well blue gray. And now I can simply copy this line over to all my other pages onto the green page onto the well let me save that then onto the index page save that control s and onto my peach page control s and save that and lastly onto my pink page okay cool uh, i can close all these i don't really need them open so like now i'm in my master branch and i don't necessarily want to commit my code to my master so what I'm going to do is go back to my terminal, say git status, and basically it's saying, hey, you are on your master branch, and these things have changed. Basically, you modified these four files, and uh, you have like a new file, basically an untracked file, which is that blue-gray file. So what do you want to do? Now, um, I can just take care of this, again, with one uh, simple uh, git add, add command. So I'll type git add. And then the period to say all files. Actually, I'm sorry. Let me uh, back up a little bit. What before I do that, I re recall that we are in master, and I'm sorry, we're not taking it that far. We are just actually going to switch over to a new branch. Uh, that is this, that is as far as we're going to get go with this exercise. So to create a new branch, I'm going to say git checkout dash b git checkout new branch, and then we'll get a branch name, and I'm going to call the new branch name blue gray, just for simplicity. And like now we are on a new branch, right? So it says we switch to a new branch named blue gray and you still have some files that you have modified. And of course we have this untracked file. So if we type get status one more time, um, we get like the same message, but like now we are on the blue gray branch. That is as far as we'll take it. And then um, we'll digest that and then go on to the next exercise. For this next exercise, we're going to basically do two very simple things. We're going to run the git command to add your changes to the new branch that you just created. And then we're also going to run a command to commit your changes to the new branch. We will stop right there. Yeah, the effects of these two commands will only modify and update things locally. These commands will not impact GitHub server or the contents on the GitHub cloud. Okay, so picking up where we left off, uh, we basically switched over to a new branch after we had made modifications to our files. So after we made these changes, which is basically add the hyperlink and add this new blue gray page, we essentially, the only thing we did in, in Git was to create a new branch. So if we uh, kind of look back to our history here, uh, let me scroll up a little bit. We just said git checkout, then dash b for new branch, and we're calling the branch new name, right? So uh, again, it says here that we are on branch blue gray. Um, if you ever need to double check that, simply type git branch just to ensure that you're in that branch. And so, like now, uh, what we're going to do in this exercise is we're going to add these changes or update these changes in our branch. And then commit them so uh, one thing that I want to cover is that we can always do git add and then period and then that will actually add all the changes uh, and kind of stage them um, for all the files that you see here but you can also do one by one so in single quotes if I want to say green uh, HTML and call out the file or the path specific uh, the path and the file uh, specific to the change I can I can do that git add and then it'll it'll add just this one page, um, and then actually 
let's do that one more time get add and I'm just going to copy and make sure that I didn't mistype anything there we go um, oh HMTL yeah my bad um, and so like now I, I just added the the green file and I'm say git commit and uh, dash M for message and my message is uh, blue gray link in green file okay and if I type git status again what I'm gonna see is that um, this one has been staged so it's kind of ready to get pushed but these other ones and then the new file I haven't done anything to them so if I type git status you see that the green one is gone because I already kind of reserved uh, you know uh, its instructions for it what to do next but these I really haven't done anything with them so uh, I want to call that out because you can actually put specific messages for the file if you want to be pointed about the work that you did <clears throat> across various files uh, but if you just kind of want like the generic um, you know quick and easy add just hit it uh, basically type git add period and it'll add all of them and then git commit dash m for message and your message is uh, new blue gray file that should be good now if I type git status everything is accounted for so there's nothing to commit on the working tree and we are good to go before we move forward to our next exercise I just want to take a moment to review the commands that we've issued so far so essentially we create a new branch uh, by typing git checkout um, branch or excuse me git checkout dash b and uh, give it the, the new branch the name uh, blue dash gray or blue hyphen gray so that created our new our new branch blue gray uh, then after that we um, went ahead and added the files that we modified uh, in our first example we added the uh, this, the individual file green.html and we gave a message specific to green HTML and then after that we uh, just went ahead and did the the, the core add all uh, command or executed the core add all command where we say git add and then period and it basically add all these files stage them and uh, provide a message before we commit them and basically we say uh, new blue gray file right that's like the kind of the generic message that will go along when we commit these changes to github so uh, we haven't committed anything to github just yet these commands only uh, have manipulated and staged things locally but it has not shared things uh, with the server so we can actually go to our github repository I'm just gonna refresh that and then I'm gonna take a look here and see that we don't have any new branches so the next step in the next exercise will be to do just that push the changes that we have added and committed up onto a uh, github server and then the result of that should mean or sh uh, should result in us seeing a new branch in our third exercise we're going to continue with the git process of saving our files up in the git server so for this exercise you want to run the git command to push your changes to github after you push your changes to GitHub, take a moment to preview your new branch in GitHub and make a, a, a time to compare the differences between the two branches so that you know it can really sink in, sink in, in terms of what you're doing. Uh, lastly, uh, also, uh, rather, compare the comments for the green.html file uh, versus the comments for your other file and uh, that is assuming that you you know uh, added different comments for different files if you didn't no worries uh, if you just did the git add command uh, but we will be doing this for this exercise just to kind of illustrate what the purpose of uh, the git commit dash m for message is for so I'm back at the terminal and as I mentioned this exercise is to push our changes up to the github server so uh, before I do that I actually want to do two things you know the first one is uh, take a moment to actually preview my changes here there could be instances where you where your changes are not complete or they're not fully tested you don't just necessarily want to 
you know, push code all the time, or at least uh, merge code that has gone unchecked or unverified locally to your standards. So what I'm going to do is actually kind of go back to the uh, demo page that I have here and I refreshed it and I see that I do have the new blue gray page so now I want to click on that page take a look at the background and it looks like the background updated successfully I'll go ahead and click on the green page and see that the blue gray uh, page link is still there and do the same for the other pages and it all looks you know pretty um, hunky-dory so everything is good to go now uh, that I made those changes locally, I feel more comfortable about what I'm going to push uh, up in the server. Now, even though I'm not going to merge it at this point, I'm just going to basically save my work up to date on GitHub. Um, you know, at least I know I'm at a good stopping point. So I'm going to type git push dash u and then origin head. So it's basically the last things that have been committed. Just pop them all up into GitHub hit enter and I again I will since this is my first commit uh, or excuse my first push up to the github server I'm gonna get an automatic link to create a pull request I'm gonna ignore it for now because I don't necessarily want to do that just yet um, but I have successfully pushed my data or my branch up into the server so now if I look here it says blue gray had recent pushes less than a minute ago now if I uh, click on my drop down, well I haven't refreshed my page so it hasn't shown up yet, but I'll go ahead and refresh it. And now I should see the blue gray branch here, which I do. So I can, uh, if I'm ready to do a pull request, I can go ahead and click this button and compare for, pull, for the pull request or I can follow this link. Either one is fine. Like I said, we're not going to do that just yet, but I am going to take a moment to compare my master branch, which has, you know, four different HTML files uh, against my blue gray branch which should have five different HTML files one two three four five and the blue gray being the new file so all is good my my new branch exists up on github so my changes have been saved uh, to the cloud or to github in our next exercise I want to take some time and uh, actually create a pull request so that we can combine the new changes that we made uh, to this particular uh, commit or uh, within this particular branch rather within our latest branch and merge those changes to our master branch right our main code base so we'll be doing two things we will be creating a pull request um, and there's a couple ways that you can do that uh, and then after that, we will be merging the changes via the GitHub web UI. So the last time that we actually created a pull request, we keyed it, we keyed off our terminal. Um, basically, this link that is provided to us here, I essentially control clicked it and it opened up a new page to create a new pull request, uh, put in some information here and I was off to the races by creating the pull request. Now, it could be that you may have subsequent commits and this history will be deleted. So you don't necessarily want to hassle and go through these changes every single time. So you can actually create a new pull request um, through uh, the GitHub interface. So as we see here, uh, once we have subsequent pushes or our most latest push, you'll see that you'll have a link here to compare and, and create a pull request. So I'm gonna click here, click on that, and it'll take me really to the same page that I saw before. So in this header, I'm basically gonna add, uh, adding a new blue gray page, um, making the site more colorful is what my message will be. And again, if I had peers to review this, I would add them here. Or if I was working within a uh, structured project, I would create labels and add them here. But we're not going to necessarily cover that since it's just our personal project. Um, so we'll create that pull request. Then we're asked to uh, if we want to merge it. And so we do. So we'll say merge pull request. And we're going to confirm the merge. Um, if we had some comments to add in addition to that, we, 
we can do that here but I don't think that's necessary that's not necessary for us right now and once we click on that we get like this uh, merged message up here that we just finished merging our blue gray branch onto our master branch and again just for you know housekeeping purposes I recommend that you delete the branch however that's not necessary but so I mean what's well, optional it's up to you but now I'm just gonna go back to my code and essentially look at my master branch and see that I do have my new blue gray file so my master branch is going to basically mirror or be the same thing as my blue gray branch as now my master branch has those changes now uh, one other thing that I wanted to make a note of that I, I skipped in the last uh, exercise was to take a moment to look at the comment between the green HTML file and the other ones if you recall we when we added and committed the green HTML file we put its own message blue gray link in the green file so you see that's uh, called this one out specifically and then for the rest it was a git add and then period so git add all and we just had like this one base message new blue gray file which is completely fine either way however I want to call out that comment that the specific comment to this green file in case you need to have uh, or you want to leave a trail rather of specific work that you've done for each kind of specific file or even set of files so just be aware of that uh, that's like a minor kind of nuance that could work to your advantage or could prove helpful at some point in time so again our master branch parallels our blue gray branch and you're good to go for our last exercise we want to take a moment to actually pull down the latest copy of the master branch which is the latest and greatest set of code uh, so that we're working off you know the most complete code so this exercise is really simple we're simply going to run the command to pull the latest version of master and we'll toggle back between branches just to uh, compare the code okay so as I mentioned uh, we will be pulling down the latest copy of master and this is what it looks like after the merge we now have the blue gray file if we go back to our uh, terminal we can see that in the branch that we're in which is the blue gray branch blue gray the files as we list out include the blue gray HTML file however if we go back to our master branch at least our local copy of our master branch that has not been updated yet uh, and we list the files we notice that we do not have the green uh, excuse me the blue gray file uh, that's also evident in our uh, editor as we're now on the master branch and the blue gray file is not here it's not present so what we'll need to do is actually pull down the latest merge or the latest uh, master branch from github from the cloud so uh, i will basically ensure that i am on my master branch so i can just type git branch and it'll confirm that i'm on master and again if you're not on master simply type git checkout master and then that will put you on that branch and as you can see we're already there so nothing really happened we're still on master uh, and really the command to pull down the latest and greatest code is git pull and that does just that so we kind of see that this is visually saying oh yeah you had one change or like a minor like a line to change and then 14 lines of change in this new file and so on so uh, after um, entering and pulling down that data you may have seen this you know suddenly appear over here to the to the left of us and that is exactly what happened <clears throat> pull down the new branch and along with the changes and these new files so now the master branch has a new file the blue gray file and then updated uh, green index peach and so on other files with the blue gray link hey guys I want to congratulate you for getting this far really as I mentioned earlier uh, with these commands that we've have just walked through you've covered about 70 percent or maybe even more of what you're going to use uh, with git from a day-to-day -day, unless you're like a DevOps manager or someone 
uh, really embedded into the engineering team. But nevertheless, you've accomplished a lot by going through this set of commands. So in summary, what we've covered uh, has been uh, git checkout hyphen b branch name, meaning we're creating a new branch, uh, git add uh, dot or period in order to add the files that you manipulated, add it to the new, new branch, whether you modified them or, or added new files. Uh, then we touched on the git commit message, which basically provides a message uh, to the work um, on uh, to the work that you did to the files that you just um, you know added in the previous command. Uh, then uh, on the you know the fourth key step is to push those changes to the GitHub server. So those files, those edits, those, those things that you modified, you want to go ahead and push them uh, to the GitHub server. Then uh, we, of course we went to the GitHub server and uh, we created a pull request um, and we, we merged those changes and then after that was said and done then we issued a git pull uh, you know with those final merge, cha merge changes into master and and pulled the, the latest and greatest uh, set of code from our branches so that's very good uh, hopefully you feel comfortable enough uh, by this point but if not the videos are short enough you can uh, you know rewatch and I encourage you to practice over and over or you're, you'll just practice over and over anyways if you're using Git at work. Uh, so I do have some bonus material uh, that I'm going to cover uh, on this next lecture. Um, this is not necessary to, to move forward uh, with your utilization of Git, but they are handy. Uh, so I'm going to list them out really quickly. Uh, first of all, I'm going to cover the Git ignore file and what that means for you and what uh, yeah the, what the benefits are uh, for for you when using Git. Uh, next, I'll touch on Markdown, and we'll see that a little later. Uh, really relates to the README file that we saw early on. Um, then git stash and git pop, two very handy commands as you're toggling or switching uh, between work. Uh, then we'll look at GIF, uh, git diff really quickly. Now that allows to compare between branches, and, and we'll see the use, usefulness of that. And then finally, uh, removing a file uh, with git. So um, stay tuned for the next bonus material, um, and thank you very much for sticking this far, and congrats on your way to mastering Git. So I want to paint a scenario for you really quickly. Um, depending on what language uh, you're programming in, or you know maybe what technology you're using, there are some files that you you're not necessarily going to want to back up to your Git repository. So uh, let's say, for example, you know, part of my code here would require me to to have like a CSV file uh, to look at for reference, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a, a new uh, file, uh, CSV file. I'm just say um, column one, column two, and just uh, put a couple of sample records. Um, I'll just say this one is test and separated by value and then test 2 and separated by value 2 okay just add some some information there I'll save it and in this same directory I'll just save it as um, useless CSV so now I have like a CSV file it doesn't really necessarily do anything for my code maybe it's just some sort of reference file or what have you and if I go on to my um, git repository right um, I see that my use this file is there and I type git status and it's basically saying hey you have an untracked file uh, you know what should I do with this well I don't necessarily want that's not something I want on my um, in my repository so I want Git to basically ignore this file uh, and if I want that to happen what I'm gonna do is basically create a new file and I'm gonna call this file uh, dot git ignore now by placing the period before the file name it becomes uh, or it gets treated like a system file and depending on what operating system you are on you may get like some sort of prompt uh, you know kind of like a warning almost but just save it uh, in that fashion anyway and so you'll see it's here uh, you'll see that visual studio code already recognizes that this is a you know a legitimate or valid file uh, you know within git and so what this is going to do it's go uh, it's going to allow us to 
identify files that we do not want tracked or basically loaded or saved into our Git repository. So if I want to not necessarily have to um, save and, and push this into my repo, um, I just can type uh, asterisks for uh, asterisk meaning like wildcard basically and any CSV file. So anything that has a CSV prefix, uh, go ahead and ignore. So like now I'm going to save that file and I'm going to go back to my uh, terminal and type git status again. And, uh, and so now all of a sudden we don't, we don't see useless.csv coming up uh, anymore as a file that should be tracked. However, uh, we do see git telling us like, hey, you do have another file. It should git ignore if you want to continue to track, uh, or excuse me, rather block files or ignore files that should go in your GitHub space, you'd need to commit this one. So what I'm going to do is say git add, and here I'll just type, you know, git ignore. I can do either git period or just git ignore, but I want to type the full file name out just to try something different. And my message, I'll type git commit and ignoring unnecessary files, file types actually. Uh, you can put whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I will push this to my server. And uh, there we go. So uh, notice guys that I did not necessarily create another branch so I can merge it. I did it straight off of master. Um, if, if you noticed if you noticed that or if you caught on that you may be asking hey how come you didn't create another branch for you change uh, I did you know uh, as I mentioned you uh, push to master and really a git ignore file is something that you should probably do early on when you first create your repository um, and so this is really kind of like a master specific file anyway so you want it there so that any new branches that contain files you want to ignore um, kind of like get pre-ignored as as people pull their initial copy of master or clone their initial copy of master. So uh, now if I go back to my repository and I'll refresh uh, the git ignore, it lives here, right, with our message. And I mean, of course, we can look at it. It's really like the same contents uh, that we typed in. So basically, we're ignoring .csv files. Um, so again, we type, go back to our master branch, type git status, and everything is up to date, even though we have this file. Uh, useless CSV that we're not doing anything with. So that is the use of Git Ignore. There are other templates. Uh, there are templates online that provide you with uh, really common files to ignore, like uh, system files or fold or generated files, like uh, DS or .ds store that sometimes generate on uh, on OS X, uh, and you know a couple of other files that are you know very handy. Um, yeah, just references to to just ignore from garbage being loaded or garbage files from being loaded into your Git repository and really kind of achieve that clean workspace. So the next the next topic that I want to cover is Markdown or the Markdown language. Now we've seen this before uh, when we first created our Git repository you may recall that we created this readme file and essentially what a readme file uh, or this readme md for md for markdown uh, what this markdown file provides is uh, a place where you can document your git repository it can be anything as simple as just describing what the git repository is for to something a little more you know specific as far as like how to use uh, the code that you have within your git repository so um, you don't necessarily have to uh, attempt to learn Markdown language. Um, you can actually uh, Google like Markdown template, you know, GitHub or something of that nature. And we're going to look for a good one. Uh, let's see. Let's try the sample readme for all your GitHub projects. Um, see if this is a good one. Let's try to find something we can just copy and paste. I'll just type Markdown template. Oh, here we go make a readme I think this is probably a good one there we are so if you notice uh, this gives us a side-by-side -side comparison uh, where like the one hashtag gives you like kind of a big heading uh, two hashtags uh, give you a smaller heading um, you can encapsulate like 
code uh, basically with this uh, triple uh, I don't know what kind of tick marks they are but they're uh, they're right the one right below the tilde uh, on your keyboard key and so on so we're gonna copy this information and basically just you know um, just take some stuff from it uh, and then and start previewing it uh, in our own file so I'm gonna go back to my editor and I'm gonna open up this readme and I'll leave this this is my sandbox repo alone I mean intact um, and in fact this I'll replace this uh, foobar and say this is my first repository yay okay and uh, installation like if you had some instructions in terms of how to use it let's say for example you had um, I don't know well this is a web page so we'll just say upload my uh, the Dot HTML files to your web server. Okay. And I'll just say this is my first web page. There you go. Um, and then here, um, we can just say, well, actually, we don't need to say anything because we don't have any bash commands, but just to kind of keep like the bash syntax and kind of like let it look cool, we'll just say, you know, git clone and then repo name here and then so it'll look like nice and fancy and so um, let's go ahead and delete this information because we're not really coding in Python um, here contributing uh, if you wish to make my website better please clone and provide your code and push your code Okay, so now we're like making our README like a little nice, uh, nicer and crisp. Uh, and then license, well, they really, I mean, if it gets, I suppose if there was a license, you know, we would add that information here. But, you know, we'll just fill in this, um, this link box. So basically, what's in brackets, it's the text that is going to appear. Text uh, to appear on link. And then really what's in uh, the, the parentheses is the link that is going to be uh, linked to this, this text. So it's like a markup language, just kind of very similar or well, rather somewhat similar to the HTML that we looked at before. Uh, now Visual Studio Code does have a way to preview this information. Um, so if I say markdown preview, this is kind of what it's going to look like, except, you know, a different uh, shading or, you know, different background color. Uh, not a dark background color, but when I load it, this is kind of what we're gonna be looking at, uh, you know, in our uh, via like the, our GitHub repository page. So again, I am on master, and I'm not gonna create a a new branch, um, you know, just just to kind of avoid the extra steps. So I'll just type git status, and you see that we have modified the README file. We've added that Markdown language, and uh, git add git commit and I'll just say updated readme and then we'll push our changes over to master and then that should take and now let's move on over and uh, if you notice the readme contents is you know pretty stale there I have to refresh that information and once I refresh it you know voila now you have some really cool formatted code and information or rather markdown uh, uh, information via markdown about your repository so this can be highly beneficial especially you know if it is a program that that you've written and that you want others to be able to use and possibly contribute so or contribute to so uh, that is the beauty of markdown language the next topic in the bonus material that I want to cover is git stash and git pop. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and make a change to our, our initial web page. So uh, for example, I'm going to create a useful link section in my website. And um, let's just say, for example, I want to link to a search engine, right? So for this, I'll just say I'll link to Google. So Google.com 
and I'm not necessarily convinced that uh, this will add any value to my website but you know I just figure um, you know it could be useful so like I refresh my page my, my page excuse me and now I have like this useful link uh, to google.com but I'm on the fence whether I actually want to want to save those changes so um, what I'll do is you know go into uh, my terminal type get status and right away I'll see that I'm on my branch master and that I've made a change to my index file uh, but like I said uh, this is not something I want to commit to I'm just fiddling and messing around so what I'll do is I'll create a new branch get checkout hyphen B and then my branch name I'm gonna call it garbage really because I mean this is kind of a garbage change anyone can type Google uh, in their web browser just type what they're searching for and automatically uh, a search engine will, will look for it right so, uh, so I'm creating this branch called garbage and it says I switched to my new branch garbage um, and again type get status and I see that the change is still there uh, waiting uh, for me to do something with it but I don't want to even commit it to my garbage branch so what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna say get stash and that's basically saying hey you know what put this away until I decide to do uh, something with it later so now that I get stashed that, that is stashed it rather uh, if I type get status, uh, it won't show me that there is anything, right? So let me just clear that screen and type get status again so you can see that. And there is no file to, you know, that it's saying that I have to do something with uh, or no file change. And in fact, if I go back to my code, that useful link section uh, that I just typed up is gone. That's no longer there. So, uh, you know, and I'm on my garbage branch. So uh, now I can freely move. Uh, between branches so I can go back to get checkout master and all is good uh, if I decide to you know maybe fiddle around with the changes I was thinking about earlier I can go back to my garbage branch uh, and unstash those changes so I'll say get stash pop and all of a sudden it kind of restores those changes and if I go back to uh, my my editor I see that those changes you know reappear here and maybe you know I just decide hmm yeah Google's not a, a good choice maybe I'll do DuckDuckGo um, and I think that's their actual URL I could be mistaken but uh, I decided to make these changes instead um, and then you know commit them here if I wanted to and if I and if I'm still on the fence about it right and I, I want to go back to master um, I won't be able to go back to master or actually I am sorry because I haven't sta I haven't changed anything but um, if if I go to, to master I see that that's still kind of just hanging over my head uh, and again I can go to, to to my garbage branch and stash it there so say get stash it puts them away I type get status there's nothing here uh, and now I can just go back to master and, and almost kind of start with a clean slate so I type with git status and again those changes are just being stashed um, in the garbage branch uh, really just kind of sitting there uh, if at the end of the day I said you know that was just a silly thought that useful links it really doesn't add any value um, I can basically type git branch uh, dash D for delete and then I'll delete my my uh, my garbage branch and so um, it's actually type git branch to look at the uh, the branches that we have here. So I have blue, uh, blue gray color changes, the garbage, all the branches that we're familiar with uh, in this course. So I'm going to type git branch hyphen d for delete and delete the garbage branch. And there we go. And I type git branch again, and that's gone. So you know that code I never really have to deal with again. It was just uh, things I was just fiddling with. So all good and everything is kind of back is pretty much back to normal nothing's changed okay so the next uh, topic that I want to cover in our bonus materials is git diff and uh, git diff basically allows us to see the changes between two branches so uh, we have worked on two different branches or created two different branches uh, during the course uh, one is the color changes where we added new pages and then the second is the blue gray where we added the blue gray page uh, your branch name 
maybe name something different depending on what color you chose or which naming convention you use for your branch. But nevertheless, you can apply this concept. So I'm going to clear my screen just to kind of get a, a clean slate. Um, and so like now I'll type git branch just to kind of list out the branches here that I have. And basically I just have to type git diff and the first branch name, which is blue gray, and then uh, two periods and then the second branch name, which is color changes. And if once I hit enter, uh, this gives me some, you know, very verbose output really, but it's basically saying that, um, you know, in one file, uh, we, uh, you know, we, we had, uh, what is, I guess it looks like we deleted blue gray. Uh, so like that is like the difference between here. Um, and then in another instance, we made some changes to the green file. Uh, and it's basically highlighting, uh, like this new addition that we have here. So actually, uh, I think up top, it's basically saying that we added the blue gray, the blue gray HTML file. That would be the difference between here and there. Um, and then uh, on this one is we're adding this new line uh, for the link to the blue gray file in the green.html file. And I think you're gonna see very, pretty much like the same thing there. Uh, I mean, uh, further down, like for example, for this, uh, for the index page where we add, uh, again, the link here. Um, and then maybe for another page down the line, the peach page where we have some additions. And again, it's gonna be that link. So it's very verbose, but at the very minimum, if you're looking to kind of understand, you know, what the differences are between two branches, let's say it's like something super subtle and, and you're really just like, you know, it's a minor change and you don't know exactly where it is uh, and everything and all the code looks the same. Uh, this would be really useful to kind of pinpoint those minor changes that you're trying to distinguish. Uh, if there are a lot of changes, obviously you're going to have a lot of code to sift through. Um, so there, there are probably other options that are uh, more visually telling, uh, especially when you're uh, creating a pull request uh, within the pull request and within GitHub. You'll have like a nice little diff checker that you can uh, do a side by side comparison with. But if you're just working through your terminal and you're trying to identify or spot that small change in code, uh, git diff is highly beneficial. Uh, if uh, in order to quit out of that, uh, just type Q and it'll get you back to your ter terminal prompt and you'll be good to continue with something else. Okay, for the final topic in our bonus material, I'm going to review how to delete a file from our Git repository. So maybe something that we created an error. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just create a new file here and I'll just type some silly text. Let's say error file and then save it and I'll call this error.html. And so like now I have like this file that's kind of nonsensical and I am on my master branch. Um, so I'm just gonna work from my master, not necessarily create a new master and go through like the formal process. Uh, so I will add these changes um, and then push them to the server. So error file to be deleted is the message I'm adding here. Push origin head. And uh, I, did for, I did forget the U, it'll still work uh, without the dash U parameter, but um, anyways, it's good practice. Either, well, either way is fine, but I think with a hyphen U is, is better practice. So, um, so like now, if I go to the uh, GitHub page, I see that I have this error file, right? But it's really nonsensical. I don't need it. I just uh, accidentally published it or it slipped through uh, the, the checking process. Uh, so no big deal. What I will do in my terminal is really just, I can simply delete it. So I'll list my files and I'll say it rm uh, error. So basically delete this file. Okay. And if I type git status, it said, hey, you have a change. Basically, error got deleted from here. So that's cool. That's exactly right. So I'm going to say git add, meaning like git uh, stage these changes, and then uh, add a message through git commit, git commit dash m, uh, deleting obsolete file. Uh, and then I'll just push my changes. 
Oops. Ah, uh, here we go. And so like now that basically took care of deleting that file on the repo server. And like now my error.html file is gone. So uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, a very convenient way you can delete files locally. And then um, when you, you know, stage your changes and then commit them and push them, uh, you know, Git will act accordingly to the changes that you uh, basically made locally. Hey everyone, thank you very much for completing this course. I hope that you found it informational and useful and look forward to apply this course uh, in your day-to-day -day job or at least pretty soon. Um, before I let you go, there are a couple of things that I want to share with you. Uh, the first are some useful links to a uh, Git cheat sheet. Uh, essentially, uh, this sheet will have uh, pretty much all the commands that we covered in this course. This way you don't need to commit, commit the commands to your mem to memory or look them up um, you know, whenever you're interfacing or dealing with Git. Uh, then there's also le learn Git branching at learngitbranching.js.org. And uh, that basically provides an interactive way that you can learn Git uh, through your web browser. So if you had issues installing Git or just getting started in general, um, or you know, getting yourself set up, that is a good alternative. Um, I do also want to provide some book recommendations. I feel that uh, beefing up your technical skills is key in order to make you a competitive candidate for your next role at your organization or at a new organization, a new company. Uh, but it's also, uh, you know, having or developing those analytical skills and those soft skills is highly beneficial as well. So uh, the book that I want to recommend uh, is called Culture Code, and it essentially examines uh, what how good cultures thrive. Uh, and it, all, it also provides a little bit of background on physiology and our responses to our environment, and as well as some biases that are that exist in current culture and really a kind of how to create a, a good dynamic culture. And I feel that that would be highly beneficial, um, you know, as as you you know progress in your career and are probably assigned more responsibilities and, and dealing with more folks and, and all that other good stuff. And then of course there's the Black Swan. So currently at the time of this recording, uh, we are uh, several months into uh, the COVID pandemic, uh, which is considered a black swan event. So uh, really, uh, even though it's a dated book, it's still kind of a relevant book. And I feel if you get through half or three quarters of it, um, it'll give you like a perspective on on black swan events. So um, so I definitely recommend this book as well. Uh, and as always, I mean, and again, rather, thank you for uh, completing this course. Uh, I, I humbly ask that you, uh, you know, a rate the course, um, you know, whether it's a one star or, or five star, the most, the best rating that you can give it. It's, it's highly appreciated and even more appreciated if you provide feedback, even if it's uh, the highest rating, if you give it the highest rating, simply because I, I want to know how I can make courses better in the future or if there's anything missing. And, and this will certainly help me, uh, you know, perfect or at least improve uh, with the content creation. Well, thanks again and have a blessed year.